Hi guys, it's Grace with Grace Gets Gastric, and I am here today for my second quarter book review slash roundup. So um, if you watched my last video on my books, Q1, I did a roundup of sort of um, my favorite and not so favorite books that I read in the first quarter or the first three months of the year. And so I thought I would do it again for my um, notable reads in the past three months or the second quarter of 2019. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around. Uh, so just do a sort of a recap of the past three months. I read 116 books, uh, um, which is a little extra, I know. But to be fair, as I've mentioned before, a lot of those are sort of romance novels, which are super quick for me to read. Um, I can read one of those in a couple of hours, if not less time. So I'm not going to talk about any of those because those are just, it's a whole different type of book. But I also read... Um, over 30 non-romance novel books and those are kind of the subject of what I'll talk about today. I'm not going to go over all 30 of them though. Part of this was helped by the fact that I'm doing the 75 hard. Um, so if you've been watching those videos uh, you'll know that uh, one of the requirements is to read um, at least 10 pages a day of a um, motivational self-help book. So a number of those books were motivational or self-help books that I read as part of the challenge. And then you also have to do two 45 minute workouts a day, one of which has to be outside. And because I've been doing the working out, um, I've been listening to more audiobooks, both for my outdoor walk and sometimes even during my um, non outdoor, my other workout. So um, I've been listening to more audiobooks. So there are a number of audiobooks on here as well. So, like I said, I read 116 books this last quarter. Uh, eight of those were Pulitzer Prize winners. Um, and a, my total for the um, year so far is 162. So I've read 162 books this year. Uh, this last quarter obviously was, uh, was a lot. I did a lot of reading. So to start off, I'll talk about the great category. So these are the books that were uh, particularly amazing in my opinion, and that really stood out. So the first one is Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. This was one of the books I read for the 75 hard. It has been on my list for a long time. A number of people had rec recommended it to me. And it was the single most impactful book that I read as part of the 75 Hard. Um, it just really, really spoke to me. Motivational books are honestly not really my bag. Uh, but this one really got to, it's all about vulnerability. And um, that is something that I have personally struggled a lot with in my lifetime. And I think it's not uncommon for people with weight problems to struggle with it. And so... Um, it just, it really got me in the feels. I would really highly recommend it to anyone and especially anyone in our community because I do think it covers stuff that um, is really relevant. Uh, the next book was The Best We Could Do by Thi Bui. I think that's how you pronounce uh, her name. And it was a graphic novel. Um, I do really like graphic novels. I particularly enjoy graphic novels that um, deal with more uh, I guess like meaty or um, intense content. I guess I, I don't really want, I, I'm not a big graphic novel person for just kind of like lighthearted things, but I like when graphic novels really get into complex, particularly complex family dynamics. There are a number of them that I have read that I've really enjoyed. And so this one was about a um, woman who was sort of talking about herself and her relationship with her parents and her parents who had uh, immigrated to the United States uh, kind of during the fall of Saigon during the Vietnam War and um, I thought it was really interesting. I thought the art was beautiful personally and um, a, I've, I've read a lot of ones that have to, a lot of graphic novels that have to do with sort of um, families during and after war and uh, like Persepolis, Mouse um, are a couple so um, yes this one was really good. And it's a graphic novel, so it's very quick. The next is uh, An American Marriage by Tahari Jones. And uh, this one was intense. Uh, it is about a, a black couple who live in the South and they're kind of coming up in life. They're recently married and then the husband is wrongly accused of a crime and sent to prison, which is the story of so many black men in America. And it really just, everything, all the relationships were so complex and so beautifully rendered. And it's a very difficult, a lot of difficult subject matter. You know, 
uh, topics of race, of um, relationships, of love. I mean, it's just, it was a very human novel and the way that the author managed to portray all the characters in their humanness and really make you sympathize and relate to them uh, and really not demonize or villainize any any of the characters in the situation was really masterfully done, I thought. So uh, it was definitely a very intense read, uh, but the kind of book that sticks with you for a while it was really beautifully written. Uh, the next one on a slightly lighter note was the Renegades series. So I read book one and two by Marissa Mayer. Um, I listened to both of these on audiobooks. I highly recommend. Um, it's a trilogy, but the third book isn't coming out until November. And it's a YA superhero book series. Um, I've read another series by this author, um, The Lunar Chronicles, who's actually, it's narrated by the same um, female narrator in this series, which is partially, I loved her in that one. So that's why I wanted to listen to these. And I really recommend listening, but I'd say reading is good as well. And the author actually lives... Um, locally which is kind of cool for me but uh it's you know YA superhero but very interesting like there's a lot of interesting kind of parallels it takes place sort of after a an anarchy revolution and it's sort of the children of that revolution as they kind of try to rebuild and they're on opposite sides and there are a lot of like fun tropes mistaken identities or like identity you know hiding your identity and falling for your nemesis and all this stuff. I mean, it's really uh, interesting and thought provoking and just a lot of fun. I love YA, to be honest, particularly YA that has some kind of fantasy, sci-fi, superhero type thing. I'm YA that's just like regular is okay as well, but particularly just like the fun, interesting genre YA, I just think that there's so much fun to be had. <laughs> Anyways, highly recommend. And then kind of going along with another fantasy thing, uh, I did want to have to, I did want to note again the Temerer series by Naomi Novik. Uh, I mentioned that in my last video, um, but I'd only read the first five books. It's a nine book series, so I did read the last four books and it's still one of my favorites. Um, I love this author. It is a, um, it takes place during the Napoleonic War, so it's sort of a historical set of novels, but it's a Napoleon Napoleonic Wars if there were dragons. Uh, so there's actually a lot of really fascinating and interesting history and historical fi figures. Uh, and then the dragons are just amazing um, and have such personality. So it's a lot of fun. I definitely recommend it if you're, if you're into that kind of thing. Next up, we have another book that I listened to on audio, which is Becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, I definitely recommend listening to an audio if you can because it is read by the author and I think books particularly memoirs when they're read by the author it adds a little bit something special because you're hearing it the way they wanted it to be heard if that makes sense um I'll admit I was kind of skeptical going into it I have a great respect for Michelle Obama but the book is long the audiobook was like 19 hours which is insane for a memoir <laughs> And uh, I am so impatient because I, I can read so much faster than I can listen. So uh, I, was, I was like, does it really need to be that long? And it was so hyped and I'm immediately skeptical of anything with a lot of hype. But I thought it was just really fantastic. Um, it is long, but it feels super comprehensive. It feels like this is kind of the only book she needs to write about her life up to this point because she covers so much ground. And it starts a little slow, but that's understandable because she is covering her childhood and like the pre Baroque days to get you to give you context for sort of what happens next. Um, I did listen to it on double speed on on audio because she reads so slowly, um, which is good for a lot of people. But I was able to listen to it on double speed and didn't feel like I lost anything. So that helps in terms of my uh, impatience. But I did thought I did think it was really, um, really great. Definitely made me very nostalgic. We'll just say that. And then um, the last book I'd say for my great category is uh, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So um, there is a movie about this book or a movie version. I've not watched it. Uh, it came out a while ago. It had a lot of hype. It's been on my list for a long time. And it's another one where I'd say the hype was absolutely deserved. Um, another YA book. Uh, 
talking about, I mean, it really covering a lot of race in America, being black, growing up black in America and what that means. And it was just so, so d well done, <laughs> you know, like just everything was done in such an authentic and respectful and I guess realistic way. It didn't, and it didn't feel, I don't know, it didn't feel preachy. It didn't feel like, um somebody was writing about something that they didn't understand, which I, I do sometimes see in books these days. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it really gave me a lot of feels. I read it in one sitting. I was planning to read it over a few days and I just could not put it down. Um, and I actually have her next book on the come up uh, on my Kindle. So I'm going to be reading that probably in the next few week or two. Anyways, next category is good. So um, these are books that I enjoyed. Uh, that I liked, I'd recommend, but maybe we're not like amazing, didn't blow me away totally. Uh, but the first is Daughter of Fortune by Isabel Allende. Uh, I really like Isabel Allende. Uh, she is a Chilean author. I studied abroad in Chile, so that really has like a special place in my heart. Uh, my favorite book of hers is uh, In La Casa de los Espíritus, or like in, in the House of Spirits. And uh, this one, I, I enjoy it. I didn't love it quite as much. It takes partially, place partially in Chile, in Valparaiso, where I did spend some time, which was cool. And then partially in California, mostly I would say in California during the California Gold Rush. Uh, and I think perhaps as a result of that, um, it lost a little bit of what I love about her books. I particularly love when she does magical realism, and that was not as present here. Uh, I did think that it was really um, interesting and well done. It just wasn't my favorite ever. Uh, next is Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides, 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 I should have looked at how to say his name, uh, but this was a Pulitzer Prize winner, and uh, I did, I did really enjoy it. It is a book, um, like, primarily about a uh, intersex person, and it was something that I had not really read much about, particularly in, uh, like fiction. So I was really actually quite excited to read a book about it and I'd heard such great things about it and I did really enjoy it. I just thought it was far too long. Far too long and talking about just going into detail about things and characters that I just didn't care about or that I didn't feel were necessary to the story. You know, I was really primarily interested in the main character, Cal, but you spend most of the book <laughs> talking about Cal's family, you know, like, uh, parents and grandparents and all of that leading up to Cal's existence. And so I just, I didn't, I didn't hate the lead up. I just thought it was too much. And I am, I've become hypercritical, um, in my adulthood of books that are just longer than they need to be. I'm all about getting to the heart of the matter and just cutting stuff that doesn't feel like it's necessary. And in, who am I to say what is necessary in a Pulitzer Prize winner? But that was what I thought. I think I would have enjoyed it. I think it would have been a great if it had been like three quarters of the length. <laughs> Next, we have a book that I really debated about good and great was um, Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah is the current host of The Daily Show or The Tonight Show. One of those. Uh, he um, He's a comedian. He's super funny. He was born in South Africa. Uh, I'm actually going to see him in December, one of his comedy shows. I'm really excited. But uh, he was born in South Africa to a black mother and a white father during apartheid. So uh, that's the whole thing. He was born a crime. That's why the title of the book, it was illegal for him to be born during that time. And so he really talks about his childhood growing up in Africa during and after apar apartheid. And it was fascinating. Uh, it's sort of like a, a, steer, sheer, ooh, a series of short stories. And um, obviously I know a little bit about South Africa during that time period, but I'd never really read like a first person account of it and of their personal experiences. So I thought that that was really cool and interesting to um, learn more about what it was like to live in South Africa during that time, particularly for um, someone who was half black and half white or colored as they were called in South Africa. So not white, not black, you know, there's like an in-between. And so it was really interesting. Um, I 
wish I could have listened to it on audiobook. I hear he does amazing. He's so good at um, accents and language. That's like one of his things. So I really wish I could have listened to it on audio, but my library didn't have it. And uh, because it is a series of short stories, it isn't told chronologically, which I found at times to be a little bit confusing because it would sort of bounce around. And I felt like there were a lot of things sort of referenced that I really wanted to dig more into and hear more and learn more about that just really didn't come up again because of the short story format. So that's kind of why it went to good rather than great, but I would really highly recommend. I thought it was really interesting and well-written. And, and you know, it was funny at times, but very poignant, thought-provoking. It was a good one. And then the last one in this category is Overstory by Richard Powers. So that was the Pulitzer Prize winner for this year. And um, it was really interesting. It is sort of told, it's a, the first part of the book is a series of short stories that are not connected, but they all kind of have to do with trees. So trees are sort of the main point of this book and basically like save the trees. So that was the first part. And then the, the first third, I'd say, and then the next two thirds is sort of those stories intertwining with one another and like, within with trees. <laughs> uh, so some people have some mixed thoughts on it. I definitely thought that the first third was the strongest part. And then the last two thirds was really slow to start and then picked up steam by the end. Um, I thought that some of the characters, I didn't see the point of them. I don't think that they really served any purpose. So I'm not really sure why they were there. But I did think that it was really interesting. Um, one thing the Pulitzer Prize winners almost always have going for them is that they are told they have a unique story structure. Oftentimes I've really noticed that the stories are told in a different and unique kind of way. It's not just start to finish. You know, there's something interesting about the way the information is conveyed, which I think is always really cool. So even when the story doesn't resonate or connect with me, I find myself engaged or fascinated by the way in which the story was crafted. So um, that's something I generally get out of most Pulitzer Prize winners. I would say so far in my experience about 90% of the ones I've read have had something very unique about the story crafting and style and presentation, if that makes sense. All right, and then the last category is the meh category. I just have a couple books here. Uh, the first is um, American Pastoral by Philip Roth. This also has a movie that I have not watched. I do not plan to watch it. I was real meh on this book. I do think part of that is because I chose to listen to this on audiobook and perhaps that was not the best format for it, but I don't think I would have loved it even if I had not listened to it, if I had read it. I just think it was, it was really long, very repetitive, and just the content itself did not resonate with me. It was, I don't know, I just, it was this father whose daughter had committed a horrible crime basically and him struggling with that. But I just, I don't know, like, old white man with who's had a, a perfect life struggling with the destruction of that perfection I just was like cry me a river <laughs> sorry bro uh, the next one is the collected stories of Jean Stafford by Jean Stafford and this is another Pulitzer Prize winner and I will say that these were expertly crafted short stories and short stories um are so much more difficult to write than anyone gives them credit for. Everyone thinks like because they're shorter, they're easier. And they are very much not. I've read so many terrible short stories because you have to basically condense a novel into this short little snippet and get the point across, get the characters across, get people to be invested in so much less time. So they're very difficult to do. I thought these were all really well done. There were just far too many of them. There was like something like 30 short stories and that is way too much for a collection I'm sorry uh, and they were all grouped into different like pockets uh, like one was like travelers and one was like the Bostonians and, and if it had just been each one of those as a separate book I think it would have been much more palatable in my opinion but by the end I was like I cannot read another short story I'm gonna throw this book out the window so it's just too many uh, and then the last one <laughs> this the worst one, in my opinion, which is Rabbit Run by John Updike. So the reason why I read this book is because there is a four book series written by John Updike, all following the character Rabbit in a different decades of his life. The last two books in this series are both Pulitzer Prize winners. I hate that they did this. It's very unusual too. 
But basically, you know, like it's a chronological series, a connected series, but only the last two won Pulitzer Prize winner, won the Pulitzer Prize. So I was like, well, in order to read those last two, I should probably read the first two so that I understand it. Well, I barely finished the first one and wanted to die. So I do not know how I'm going to, because I'm trying to read all the books, all the Pulitzers. But man, it was just, it just felt like the stereotypical book written by a white dude. <laughs> It just the way the way he portrayed women was like, have you ever met or spoken to a woman before? I get that this was written. I think it was written in the 50s, but just the misogyny and the racism really turned my stomach. I couldn't take it. And I understand that it's a different time period, but it was just ugh. the main character was terrible and not even just like in an actively bad way, because I can get behind an antihero, but just like lazy and self-centered and just sort of like letting shit happen to him and he was just ugh, the worst and the thought of having to read three more books with this horrible main character that I don't even a little bit care about is just whew, getting hated so I think I'm gonna probably read the synopsis of book two and then choke the last two down but uh yeah not fun Anyways, so that is a roundup of some of the books that I read this past three months, this past quarter. Um, like I said, I love reading. I very much enjoy it. It is one of my huge ways to relax and de-stress, uh, a way to keep myself engaged, my mind active. Um, I just really enjoy it quite a lot. So um, let me know what your guys' current favorite books are down below. I'm always looking for book recommendations. Uh, I love I love to hear what people are reading and that's how I get some of my favorites. So let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know what your favorite book is. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.